Irish towns are a really important aspect of our social and cultural heritage. They have a rich built fabric and fantastic history and legacy in the country. Incredibly, we have over 800 Irish towns recorded in the most recent census, and they provide a wonderful asset for us as great places to live, work and recreate. And this is a really opportune time with our population growth to reimagine our towns and villages, to revitalise them and to bring them back into productive and sustainable use. I suppose they demonstrate a very unique way of building. They're extremely geometric. They're very, very uh, crystalline shapes on the landscape. And they really exist in a way that was, I suppose, evident to somebody in the 1950s, which is why this photograph here is interesting. Um, because it was taken in the 1950s before the edges get blurred with suburbanisation and dereliction and so on. But I suppose if you come back to when were Irish towns really at their peak, probably 1890 to 1910, when there was a bit of wealth around, when there was lots of um, activity going on. And you see all of the Lawrence photographs as, as a huge example of the brilliant, brilliant places that they are. And looking at them, I don't see any reason why they can't be those places again. And we called this exhibition Join the Dots because there are about 90 policies about towns in already in government. And if you very simply applied them to one town and, and you thought about them as a mosaic of tiny, tiny things that could make a huge difference. We took Mount Rath very particularly because the market house in the centre of the town, which was really the, the, the town's jewel, it got demolished in the 1960s. So we looked at, if you simply took a town like Mount Rath and you said, let's just turn the lights on. Let's just put people in the town everywhere. Let's just make places in the backlands that you can develop. Let's repave the square properly and let's replace the market house. And actually that became the nub of what we did here. So we said, there are five simple interventions you could make. And the first one is very simply living over the shop. This is, I, I should just say, the center of Mount Rath. Um, and we, we've just identified living over or in the shop as being one of the main areas where people are likely to think about, you know, taking up an existing thing that's already there, extending it to the back, thinking about maybe a family putting together two or three plots and, and looking at slicing it horizontally instead of vertically. There's all kinds of possibilities for that. And the second thing that we thought about was, was this one here, which is kind of backlands development. And the idea there is to come in through the archway that's on the street. So this is very much something that is of the place. It's taking up the grain that's there, it's using the plots, and it's getting us eight units there, which are, we've called them intergenerational units. Some of them are single storey, some of them are two storey, some of them are three. And it's just to give a different variety of housing for a group of people to live in. The third intervention was this one here. And at the moment, that's just a wall um, which tidy towns have kind of tidied up with a few painted on windows because there used to be a building there. It's a very important building to hold that corner. And holding corners is a tremendously strategic thing that matters to all these towns. So if you knock off a corner for road widening, you've actually lost the sense of enclosure. So we said, um, let's think about Mount Rath as being a gateway to the Schlieve Blooms and that you could come and you could rent a bike and that there's accommodation overhead. Very simple budget accommodation for people to stay for a couple of days or a week or something like that. And then the fourth one was this one here, which is a kind of a live work unit and it's taking up an old garage in the town and saying, what can we do with that? And it's kind of semi-industrial space. So we said, well, why not you know, go with that and make it into something that is a really kind of a good live work kind of use. So it might be somebody working on um, leather work or ceramics. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't have to be a precious thing at all. And we suggested that you would build at the backlands so that you've got um, areas for, for, for of space and that we would build a story of space over it for additional accommodation for some trainees. And then the fifth one was to put back the market house. And that one is kind of like, it's the icing on the cake, but it's the linchpin that pulls it all together because it's the thing that really says we are a community. We have a place where we can share. There can be market things going on. There can be yoga classes. There can be meetings. There can be anything happening. But that's the thing that defines the town. And um, increasingly, I think that's the kind of thing that people would like to have in a town, a place where they have their own voice. And uh, I think that's all eminently possible. And then to link that all together, we suggested that you make a, co a comprehensive kind of paving plan that goes with the whole thing and makes that feel like a space again. Towns are really important cultural objects and frameworks for us. Um, we really need them. They're, they're great places of assembly. We're, as, as Irish people, we really 
used to use them terribly well. We fell out of the habit of doing that, and this seems to be a great way to, to kind of try and pull them back, back together. Even if you think about the change that one small shop makes in a town, if you get a great bakery or a fantastic butcher or a bookshop or something, it suddenly makes the whole town just sing. And um, if you have an architect beginning to, to work with people in the town to bring out those points, I think that can do enormous uh, good. And things like the existing plaster work, the beautiful old timber windows, the lovely slated roofs, all of those ordinary conservation artefacts are, are just so important to the fabric of the towns. And if you take them away, you lose it. It's incredibly delicate. And I think that's another place where architects have a terribly important role to play. We're here in Asna Square, at the heart of the town of Clonakilty, a plaza where people are having coffee, they're meeting, they're sitting, and they're enjoying the, the public life. If good quality design of public realm influences people's well-being, certainly here in Asna Square, we can see how social and economic development came out from a good plan. Asna Square is, uh, with Emmet Square, the phase one of Clonakilty for Andrew Masterplan, designed in 2012. So we're standing here on a project that is 10 years old. However, it's considered to be a pioneer on many policy and um, good practice uh, design. The place was full of um, car, car parking and road marking. It's, it's now a blank canvas for people to act and, and the community to gather and celebrate. The road uh, is now reclaimed and becomes strict. The paving is uh, an elliptical um, natural stone from Ireland and is um, based on the shared space principle where p pedestrian priority um, prevails over cars. So we have in Aston Square reversed the car priority with the people priority. In Cronakilty, as many other towns, the town centre is protected by a special conservation protection called ACA, is an architectural conservation area. To, um, to protect our buildings, the, the window, the sachet windows, and to protect the shop fronts, and we need to implement all of this to, um, to work as a quality place for people to move and live and raise their families. The economic um, rejuvenation is clear. As you can see, you can have a pizza here, you can have um, a cocktail, or we can just stroll around with your children. It's a, it's a people-friendly and people-priority place. My mum came from across the street over there. Amazing. Um, her family orange? home. Yeah, her family home was here. Did you live up at the shop? I did. How we lived up over the shop, so we were up and down the stairs. I remember three flights up. It's so convenient. Everything's two minutes away. Um, I've been living here now for about 20 years and wouldn't think of living anywhere else. We're standing in Croppy Road, which is a national route. And uh, this was um, designed in collaboration with the OPW. We were able to negotiate that part of their shoulder area was actually converted in a much bigger footpath. And this way, we can also uh, deliver this beautiful tree avenue, which is a beautiful entrance of the town, but also giving pl place for people to recreate, to enjoy the landscape, and to be close to nature. Kent Street is another great result from the collaboration between Cork County Council and the OPW. You can see the architectural solution uh, from the finish of the wall, which is a beautiful contemporary design, limestone, which is being used also in the main street and the paving. The two ways Kent Street has been reduced in one way system. This allowed us to have a beautiful large footpath and the three lines. The design collaboration between uh, the OPW and the Cork Council retrofitted um, beautiful um, architectural design detail inspired by the existing West Cork walls, especially the one along the bay in Croppy Road. Urban design plan are very uh, sustainable tools available to local authority to implement visions that need funding and often when you have a good plan the funding will come.
Here at Emmet Square, we have reimagined the, the place to match the beauty of one of the rare rural setting for a Georgian terrace housing. We are surrounded by beautiful um, Georgian houses and we have protected as a town architect the, the house residential use for years. We have avoided subdivision and we have made sure that the, the, the place is still residential. One of the most beautiful intervention was also to reutilize uh, one of the historical back lane in Emmet Square, Glebe Gardens, which is um, citizen, elderly citizen development of housing. And that proves how important is the multi-generational living in the town center. Some other people come to me and tell me, oh, we have been on holiday in Italy and we've been in Rome, we've been in Florence in the Cinque Terre and how beautiful the places are. But my answer is, Irish towns are very beautiful. They just need respect. We have a wealth of policy to apply and implement, but especially we need to have the expertise to value the heritage and to bring back the authenticity of the place. When we came here, the building was, you could practically say derelict. Um, the, the, the corrugated sheeting was all rusted. Um, it had been painted in a variety of different colours over the years, all had flaked off. The building had had structural problems in the past. And then in the 1960s, a, a, a public toilet was built, um, just down slope of the square, but right up against the building. It gave rise to a recycling centre being set up at the back of it. And therefore the square here behind me was essentially um, a yard at the back of the, uh, of the market house. It's essentially a French style covered market uh, of a type that you don't really get in Ireland otherwise. You know, the, the typical market house, certainly in Leash, is, is the Tulsal type with uh, a round arched arcade at the ground floor and a function room above. Um, and that's not what, what we see here. Um, but in rural France, you see these all the time. Uh, sometimes metal, sometimes timber, sometimes very early medieval ones. And um, the sponsor of this building would most certainly have been the Cosby family of Stradbilly Hall. They would have spent a lot of time in France. And I think they would have brought this idea for this type of market house to Stradbilly. Um, in terms of the construction of it, um, it, it seems like it is, was, was constructed by some of those sort of rural fabricators that were setting up around that time to build hay barns. And the only difference really between it and a hay barn is that the roof goes the wrong way. It's not a barrel vault, but it's a, a, a concave tent type roof. And that makes the structure really hard to resolve inside. There is a fabulous view of, uh, of Stradbilly Hall from about the 1740s. Uh, and it shows the town very like the Stradbilly that we see at the moment. Uh, the street architecture, two stories high. There are carriage arches all the way down the town. Um, some of the houses at that point would have been thatched. It's a coloured image, so you can see that. Some of them slated, but very much the architecture of the town is very much as it was then. And I think that's what we, you know, we sort of recognise that the town is still lived in. It's not maybe as, as, uh, as depopulated as many town centres, and it actually functions very well as a town, but what it lacks is a, a public space like this. And so I suppose we wanted to reinforce what we saw in that historic image. We knew from the, um, from a photograph from the Easton collection, in fact, um, that there had been a market table. We could just see the top of the table just peeping out from the, from the, the street line. A lot of people remembered it and described it to me, but it was, the descriptions were so um, varied and in certain cases implausible that kind of, there wasn't really enough to base anything on. And amazingly, somebody, uh, uh, a local man who as an apprentice carpenter had been involved in repairing the market, uh, the market table uh, came forward and we went and met him and he did me a little sketch showing what the uh, table had looked like. And from that we based our detail. And now it's a talking point. It's something that people, you know, know Stradbally for. The space as well, we, we wanted to create uh, more than just a restoration of the building, but also to create a sort of plinth that it stands on, which could be a, a public space. Yeah, I think it, I think it really has changed uh, the, the, the perception of the, of the town in a modest way.
behind me here is the potato market and um, we have St. David's Church which is also a, an early ecclesiastical site which now has an 18th century church on it and St. David's Castle which is a medieval castle is on the other side so this makes up the, the remains of medieval nace. This market has been here for hundreds of years um, unfortunately in the last century became unused. The locals didn't even know it was here. I was amazed when I went up Church Lane, which is the most charming, windy uh, lane with stone walls on each side, very narrow, just behind where I'm talking now. And there was this overgrown, uh, perfectly intact potato market, which is on the first edition on the survey map and dates from um, the late 18th century and has a very rich history and it was completely abandoned, uh, weeds growing up through the middle of it. A sort of a haven of tranquility really, uh, yet very, very close to the town centre. The site revealed its secret slowly to us. Uh, after the trees were removed, we had a good close look at the walls. Uh, we discovered um, some entrances in the, in the ruined buildings within the corner that linked from this site into the adjoining um, grounds of St. David's Church, which I think is really exciting because it then begins to open up the hinterland, the medieval hinterland behind the main street. I think an immediate benefit is by having the market within a historic market yard rather than in a car park on the outskirts of the town. Uh, firstly, it's resonating with the historical and cult cultural footprint of the town. But more importantly, it, it, it's serving to bring people in on a Saturday morning when people have a little bit of time on their hands. Um, and automatically, you're inclined to linger, to, to wander and do some other shopping around the main street. Uh, so it, it's helping to anchor the main street. I think that by having this market here, it supports future public realm developments that, that will encourage people not only to visit NACE and to do their shopping in NACE within the town centre, but actually to live here. You know, there is, like any Irish town, vacancy on the upper floors, vacancy in the back laneways, derelict buildings. You know, there are grants available currently to help with that. And I think that by having this particular venue here, showing how attractive the town centre is as a place that you don't have to drive into, that you can just get up, go out your front door, walk a couple of hundred yards, you've got your fresh food, you've got your lovely cups of coffee, your pastries. Uh, so I think it's a real investment in the potential of NACE. We see this as a first phase in the re heritage-led regeneration of NACE town, uh, reinstating the marketplace in its historic location and a community space to enjoy. The, the delivery of, of these quality um, public realm projects are really contingent and dependent on multidisciplinary teams and we have found that gathering the opinions of the community and um, capturing that perspective is key as well to the success because we want to make sure that the project is, um, there's ownership of it, there's buy-in from the community. Um, and we found in quite a few of the projects that the, um, the architects and involving them in the consultation process has actually been very successful in, in capturing that perspective and in then using that perspective to shape the project as well. In the long term, there's an overall objective to encourage people to live and work in the town centre. That over the shop living is a part of what we're aiming towards in our county development plan process in the town centre first policy that um, we're implementing um, as well. So that focus on a vibrant town centre really depends on people living and working in the town centre. Remelton is one of the best preserved um, historic towns in the northwest um, of Ireland and we're really excited to undertake a project to renew the historic fabric in the town and bring the town back to its former glory. The historic core of Remelton um, grew up around the Market Cross area and there was, a, there was a bustle of loads of shops and services along that street and then over time then the town centre moved along the mall um, and kind of bypassed that area and then over the decades the buildings became vacant and fell in the dereliction and we were at risk of losing really, really important landmark buildings that really characterise um, Remelton and make it 
the special place that it is. The main purpose of the Historic Towns Initiative really is to conserve historic buildings and the historic streetscape in our towns and villages. And that's really important because it, it allows us to um, conserve aspects of the built heritage that really convey a sense of our past. Um, but it's also important because these historic buildings really, and the historic streetscapes, provide really a sense of place to people coming to the town. I remember the day that we started the project. It was myself and Duncan, Joe and Jean on a very cold December's day, walking the streets, looking at the buildings and seeing which buildings really needed our help. Then Jean introduced us to the owners and no one hesitated to get on board and they were all just really lovely and, and to work with and you know, they, were, they got involved in the process really quickly. You know, there was 14 properties and they were all chosen specifically to give the, the most transformative visual impact to the streetscape. The front elevations were targeted. The conservation architect then designed a colour scheme to tie all the buildings together and that, that really lifted the whole entire streetscapes. The work involved carrying out a, a survey and, and through that process, we uh, met quite a few people, um, which was a good start. You know, we're not we're not here to restore the buildings so they look like new buildings. We're we're just keeping them uh, repaired so that they, you know, that that uh, that beauty that, that one appreciates in historic buildings is still very much present today. The way we approached every building was to prepare a schedule of works that focus particularly on the building envelope um, where they, either there was fabric missing, some of the, some of the roofs had collapsed, um, other ones where the rainwater goods had fallen off, so you were looking to try and control water coming in, or stop it coming into buildings, um, so that type of thing. Also prioritised then repairs to the fronts of the buildings so that would have the maximum impact on the streetscape. You know, there had been a culture in the past of people moving out of the town into newer houses. They, they've now um, seen that the town is a good place to live, that there, there is a reversal of fortunes in the town in terms of the environment improving. Um, so one particular case uh, was where we took uh, three, essentially one up, one down houses that hadn't been lived in for nearly half a century um, and one section of which had collapsed and we were able to convert that into um, a, a single house using the collapsed section um, to create a winter garden. There was no outdoor space um, associated with the house so um, it made a very tight site much more attractive for somebody to live in and, and, and quite comfortable. So you know the historic buildings they, they provide opportunities for good quality space, um, interesting environments, and, and obviously within the town of Remelton itself, it's, uh, it's a very beautiful place, and um, why wouldn't you want to live here? Well, I see the positive impact of this work really is, first of all, for local people, they're not looking at the old, derelict, crumbling buildings that would depress you. Now the buildings are restored and they're lovely and bright, and also for tourists visiting the area. And I suppose too, it sort of acted as a catalyst for other people because they started to paint the exteriors of their houses and do wee bits and pieces. And of course, immediately it created employment locally. You know, builders, carpenters, you know. And the excitement in the town was growing as the work was progressing. You know, people were saying, oh, this is great at long last from Elton's getting something done because Remelton's a bit like the musical Bring It On, where the town was lost for a hundred years and all of a sudden it was restored. So this is what I feel, Remelton. This is Remelton's day. There's been a significant amount of investment in Dunleary over the last 25 years. And all of it has its genesis in uh, what's known as the Dunleary Urban Structure Plan. This plan had two major themes. One was to reconnect Dunleary to its um, seafront, uh, and the second was to increase the uh, activity and the residential population within the town centre itself. 
later additions or iterations of the plan, a third team was, was introduced. And this was to connect Dunleary to the adjoining uh, villages and towns along the coastline. So in the first team, uh, which was about connecting the town centre with the sea, uh, there was a series of projects undertaken. And they were principally to, uh, to heal the division that existed uh, by, the, um, by virtue of the dart cutting, which effectively severed the town from the seafront and made it quite difficult actually uh, to, um, to cross over for people who would walk the pier to cross into the town and vice versa. And effectively what that did was it put a new capping over the railway uh, to create uh, a new public space, a theme of uh, planting and areas where people could sit and areas where people could dine, um, effectively kicking off an idea of livability here within, within Dunleary. It's made up of a series of small, intimate, enclosed spaces. Um, and the best space is kept public, where people can just sit and enjoy the sun and watch people going by. The second phase of the Metals project effectively creates a foreground for the lexicon. Um, and it's kept deliberately quite empty, by contrast to the first phase. And it's used to, uh, to hold Sunday markets and for gatherings and so on associated with the lexicon. And the siting of the lexicon itself was founded in the urban structure plan. And you'll see in the design of the lexicon that the main entrance faces the town and there's a series of, of steps and so on uh, that guide people down Hague Terrace, down onto the seafront. As part of that project, we also created new public realm improvements along Hague Terrace so that one effectively enters into a precinct when uh, one comes off Georgia Street and enters down into the lexicon area. There was a third phase which then created a new deck uh, to expand the People's Park and again anticipated the redevelopment of the Dunleary Baths. This was the first part of the project that restores uh, the original pavilion bathhouse but creates a new walkway around the back uh, to allow people walking along Newtown Smith to continue on to the East Pier. Uh, the next phase will be uh, new ramps. Uh, there will also be an application to open up a, a swimming pool to provide uh, almost like an urban Lido uh, on the site. We see this as a key moment in the development of the town. It'll have a restaurant, a cafe. Uh, it also has four artist studios. It has a place to swim. It has a setting for the Casement Memorial. So we, we feel that in time, this will be stitched into the fabric of all of the different projects that we've done to date. The perspective and the timelines for these projects is, a, is an extremely long timeline. I mean, it's not realized overnight. Um, so we have now created a new uh, link uh, between the Harbour Master Building and the Dart Station back up to, the new, up to Sussex Street and the town centre. And we feel that that, in addition to uh, Marine Road, will help activate the central part of the main street. Down at George's Place, we introduced uh, new housing. Again, they explored ideas of modular housing and modern means of construction. But they also formed the basis for a new street and a new connection between George's Place and the seafront at the Harbour Bridge. The style is deliberately domestic. It's quite Dutch, we feel. Um, but it's also quite comfortable. And again, we, in our architecture as well as our public realm work, try to co-join uh, ideas of livability and architecture and public life. Up at Desmond Avenue, you'll see as you uh, come in off Cross Avenue that we've narrowed the carriageway, we've changed the colour, and we've created a central area where children or even just people can come out and sit um, and socialise. And that was quite transformative, but it was an explorative project which we have subsequently used in larger social housing projects. Uh, the third theme within the urban structure plan was the idea, and this came, this came slightly later than the, the first two, was to link Dunleary more closely to its surrounding villages. During the COVID period, uh, we had an opportunity to, to realise this link um, by virtue of the coastal mobility route. Uh, which was a, uh, an intervention that effectively created a cycleway between Black Rock going down towards Sandy Cove. Um, at the heart of this uh, cycleway was an idea about active travel, 
co-joined with ideas of livability. So along that route, we also created stop-off areas, picnic areas and so on to make active travel like an enjoyable experience. Uh, but also effectively, um, that in combination with work that we did in Black Rock, again, trialing temporary interventions, more permanent work that we've done in Monkstown, uh, and also trialing out in Dorky and Glass Tool, uh, formed the basis for a method of working, which was to uh, put down in temporary materials uh, the first ideas, and then to see how they work before translating them into heavier uh, capital projects. One of the most notable developments in Dunleary has been the increase of, uh, of the residential population. So again, over the course of the urban structure plan, um, which identified many sites for redevelopment, you'll see that there's been uh, a lot of new residential buildings, conversion of old buildings back into residential, and indeed conversion of office blocks back into residential. Um, the benefit of this is that you have an in situ residential population uh, and businesses and so on can respond to that. Um, so in effect, you're not necessarily drawing people in by car into Dunleary, but you're creating a town that really exists on its own residential population. When you have an upgraded town centre, when you have an upgraded seafront, it attracts uh, people to come and live in the town. They have all the benefits of town centre living, but then the public realm also provides uh, places to recreate and to enjoy. The fantastic examples that we've seen in this film really demonstrate the transformative value in having a vision plan in the first instance, but also the pivotal role that architects play. What it really shows is the transformative power of the regeneration and revitalisation of our old towns to become really vibrant new places for all and for future generations.